I found two books so far. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to the bookstore, Target first, and then we're gonna go to Barnes and Nobles to buy some new books. This is a new little thing that I'm starting on my channel, a little booktube moment because I've been really into reading books lately, which is crazy, so crazy. Let's go and have some fun. I saw you inside, it was a cold winter night. You sure like different and toxicants to make you feel all right. Now I'm sitting here holding back tears and fears. You're just my type. We're in Target. I found two books so far. Now on to our second stop, Barnes and Nobles. Mission accomplished. We got a few books, kind of a lot, kind of not, but I'm really excited to read them all. I'll be doing a book haul when I get home, so stay tuned for that, probably in like a few seconds. It is now 2.33. We took about a little less than an hour, I think. I don't even remember, to be honest, the time that I last showed. Hey guys, I just got back home and I'm really excited to give you guys a little book haul. So of course I got some books from Barnes and Nobles and I also got some books from Target. A fun little fact, apparently Target always has sales on their books. I swear every time I go to Target and I look in the book section, there's like the 20% off sticker mark on like majority of the books. So it is cheaper at Target. Just found out today. Anyways, welcome. Thank you everyone for joining me today in my first, I guess, book talk video. This is literally crazy. If you told me that this summer I'd be making book videos on YouTube and reading a lot, I would not have believed you. But here we are, a little hair change. I'm gonna start off with the three books that I got from Target because that was my first stop in the video. First book, we're already off to a great start because this book, I feel like everyone talks about it. So of course, I had to get this to start off my reading journey. However, I will not be reading this book first and you will see why in a few videos. I feel like a lot of people have read this book and absolutely loved it. Apparently it's very sad and people cry when they read it. Let me read the synopsis for you guys that is on the back. It starts off with like a statement. Sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She comes a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston, and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, 
Everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, and maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, brilliant, and has a total soft spot for Lily, but Ryle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing. Not sure how to go about that last part, but okay. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan. Not sure if I'm butchering the names. Her first love and a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Rao is threatened. Okay, this sounds quite interesting. I'm kind of excited to read it though. The love interest, Ryo, he's a neurosurgeon. That really reminds me of Derek Shepard from Grey's Anatomy. And the next book is another Colleen Hoover book. I got her book, Reminders of Him. I think this is one of her newer books that she came out with. I think. Do not quote me on that. Again, I just got into reading literally two weeks ago. When I get obsessed with something, I kind of go a little overboard. As you can see, I bought five books. Reminders of him. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the cover? So pretty. It's giving me silk vibes. This one, I also heard great reviews on. A young mother fights to earn a place in her child's life, but is there room for her? Synopsis time. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Roran returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out, no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absorb the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. I've never read any of her books before, so these will be my first two books that I read. The last book I got from Target is a pretty basic staple one too. It's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Oh my god. This has been like one of the top books I wanted to read from when I started to read. I like murder mystery and like thriller books type of feels. Anyways, very excited and I heard that this is a trilogy so if I like it, which I most definitely probably will, I will be reading the next two. You can bet on that. The joy that reading has brought upon me, which I never thought I would experience. Quite interesting if you ask me. Synopsis. This is the story of an investigation turned obsession. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh, who then killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about, and five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. At first, Jessica casts doubt on the original investigation, but soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent. And the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in Fairview doesn't want Pip digging around for answers, and now her own life might be in danger. I feel like this is gonna be a page turner for me and I'm gonna speed through reading this book. Moving on to the books I got at Barnes & Noble. I am of course also excited for these two books that I got mostly for this one. First book is The Silent Patient. I have no words for this. I'm very intrigued to read this. The cover picture is low-key creepy, like if you look close up. It literally has someone's face. It's probably the main character's face, the lady, but I like the smell of new books. Let's read the synopsis together. Alicia Bernstein's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband, Gabriel, returns home late from work and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into a mystery that captures the public imagination. And she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids at the Grove, a secure psychiatric unit in North London. Criminal psychotherapist Theo Faber, Faber 
is captivated by Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband will take him down a path more unexpected and more terrifying than he ever imagined. Yeah, I'm like creeped out but like also really interested in this book. The last and final book of this haul is Book Lovers. This is by Emily Henry. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys the other author's names. I will do that really quickly. The first two were by Colleen Hoover. The third one is by Holly Jackson. And the fourth one is by Alex. That is a hard last name. Michael Lids probably butchered that. Originally, I was looking for the book Beach Read by Emily Henry, same author, but I didn't find it. So I got this one instead, which I also did want to read. So I was not disappointed or anything. Her covers are so cute. I like the feeling of this cover. It is so satisfying to feel. One summer, two rivals, a plot twist they didn't see coming. Just from the title and picture, I feel like this is going to be a very easy, fun read. The synopsis. Nora Stephens' life is booked. She reads them all, and she is not that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent, and her beloved sister Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away. With visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story, but instead of picnic in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or bulging four-armed bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroin, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero, but as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences, no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. I feel like I'm gonna like this book. She is also the author of People We Meet on Vacation, which is another popular book. I'm so excited to read my new books. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more videos with books in them. Subscribe to see more and my future content. See you guys in my next video, which a little hint will involve books. I dropped my first book. Walking downtown and I'm okay He's got it all figured out